Are you looking to take your personal finances to the next level? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not, with your host, Joseph Sangal. Well, welcome to episode number 57 of the Monday Money Tip Podcast. My name is Joe Sangal, and I'm fired up to join you on this Monday or whatever day you've got around to listen to this episode of the podcast. Again, we offer this on Mondays so that you can learn what we're teaching and hopefully be able to apply it sometime during the week so that you can exit each and every week having made progress in your financial journey. And so I'm so excited to yet again be joined by my co-host, Megan Hibbard. How are you doing today? Doing great. I am fired up. Uh, I this is I'm going to call this the spilled coffee edition. Yes, I wish awesome? you. I wish we had been recording a uh-huh. few minutes before we actually hit record, so we could have captured this moment. So I managed somehow <laughs> to spill an entire cup of coffee uh, while carrying a chair into the podcasting epicenter. Epicenter. And yes. spilled it all over my notes. So I'm forcing myself to look up my notes that are cut. It's the coffee stained edition. And l- let's be honest, most of us who have kids, we have some coffee stains on our stuff and around. It's probably on some of our money. There's a lot of weird stuff on money. There is weird Uh, stuff on money. It's unbelievable. But anyhow, they say it's like really dirty, like because so many people handle it and all that. Uh, I'll I'll deal with that problem. It's a great problem. (laughs) But I am so excited about today's episode of the podcast. Tell everybody what we're going to talk about. Yes. So today we're talking about um, college and money. So our question is, can you talk about how to save for college? Please share about the amount we need to save, where to save it, when to use it. Yeah, that's awesome. It's a great question, and I'm fired up to answer it. Uh, If you have kids, you have grandkids, if you yourself are going back for further education, this is going to apply to you today. And pay attention because America is drowning in student loan debt. We're going to help you be able to avoid a lot of that, if not all of that. So we're super fired up about it. But first, we're going to go to that great time. You know what time it is. Let's go. Now it's time to get caught up with our current money events. This portion of the Monday Money Tip podcast is sponsored by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. Utilize the debt freedom date calculator to determine when you will be debt free. It will provide vision for your future and fuel to power you towards financial freedom. Visit the website iwbnin.com, click on tools and select debt to find all the debt calculators and the best part, all of our tools are free. Yes, we love to be able to provide those free tools there at IWasBrokeNowImNot.com. Or you can just Google I Was Broke. Now I'm not. I'm confident there's no other website remotely named like that. Uh, so excited for today's right now relevant, some R&R right now relevant topic is student loans. And so I thought that I would share about some statistics, some costs related to student loans. Look at me being relevant. Isn't yeah. that awesome? This is right now relevant. <laughs> and this is across the USA. Uh, it's nationwide statistics. And, of course, it varies a lot based on the location of the school. But public schools right now, uh, the tuition cost of a public school, the average tuition, is $5,514. Hmm. Okay? And out-of-state is $12,145 for public schools. That's tuition. And private school tuition right now is averaging $24,107. Should we? And I was looking at this website called collegetuitioncompare.com, and we'll have a link to that in the show notes. But it's really cool because you can actually select your state and see these statistics. You can look at your state and choose to look only at private schools and look only at public schools, and it will actually list every single school in your state. Hmm. It's really cool. Yeah. And so... Uh, that was important to look at. So think about this. Public school, why is it so much cheaper than private school? Well, one of the reasons is because public school is state-supported. That's mm-hmm. why it's a state school. And so that helps subsidize the cost of, of that education. But also private school, I look at some of their tuition numbers, and they're kind of made-up numbers because a lot of people get scholarships at private schools, yeah. at least some level, to get it to be competitive with the state school. Otherwise, they would lose a lot of opportunity to serve students. But let's talk about the total cost of college. So this is not just tuition, but it's the fees, it's the books and supplies, room and board, feeding those late teens, early 20-somethings. It's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. And other miscellaneous costs. And again, these are national statistics for United States schools. And so the total cost for public in-state school is 24281 bucks. Take that times four. Gets really close to 100 k Chewy. If you're an out-of-state student, it's about $34,597. So take that times four. That's kind of like 
$116,000, something like that. That's a lot. And then private school, are you afraid of this number? <laughs> this is where it's going to hurt. <laughs> $43,098. That's crazy. So 43000 times four is kind of like 172000 That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And so the news flash is, for this right now relevant topic, is college ain't cheap. And, you know, my cottage will work them for me because I said ain't. <laughs> Uh, But this is a massive financial decision that people are making, and they're making it just as they're starting out in life. And so don't let anyone in your circle of influence, your kids, your grandkids, your niece, your nephew, anybody who's going to school, a younger sister, brother, make a, don't let them make that decision to go to school on a whim. This has the potential to either help them or harm them greatly for the rest of their lives. Let's ensure it's a decision that helps them. And a huge part of that is the financial side of it. And so that's what I wanted to share today for today's right now relevant (laughs) current money events section. Yeah. My parents said, you can go to any school you want to that's in the state. Yeah, there you go. That's public. (laughs) My my parents, uh, they weren't really interested in the college side of things. They did, you know, they're like, you can go, but we're ambivalent to it. I'm the youngest of six boys, but me and my twin are the first to go. Yeah. And... So they didn't they didn't give any counsel because they just didn't know a lot about it. Right. Uh, but it was just like a clear thing for me is I better go to the state school. It's yeah. so much cheaper. Yeah. And even way back then, you know, way back then <laughs> when I was a young boy. Get your cane. Yeah. Uh, I still graduated with over $20,000 of student loan debt, and that seems ridiculously cheap now. It was not ridiculously cheap back then. Yeah. And it's continued to go up. So... Pay attention to it. Hmm. All right. So for our success story today, um, it comes from Raylan. 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 Um, And it's it's really sweet. She said, I paid off three major bills today. Hashtag we are fired up. Had to share with somebody who would be just as excited as my husband and I. Woo! (laughs) And we are fired up. And that was sent to us on Facebook. We like getting notes on Facebook or email or phone calls. And so we celebrate with Ray Lynn. Fantastic job. There's nothing like seeing debts leave. Yeah. Like when you pay something off, it is like amazing. Yeah. And she says major. So yeah. that's great too. It's yeah. Probably and I'll tell you what, any bill that takes money from me every month, I don't care how much it is per month, is major. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the bigger the numbers are that it saves you per month, it's fantastic. Gets you margin in your life. Uh, And think about that. Now, the next month, Ray Lynn is able to redirect that money to something else that's more important Mm -hmm. and maybe even a dream. And that's what this is all about, helping people on their money journey become successful. Awesome. We're now we're going to dive into it. So the moment you've all been waiting for. So our question, just to remind you, is can you talk about how to save for college? Please share about the amount we need to save, which brace yourself because that's probably going to be a lot, where to save it, when to use it. Yes. And as I look at my coffee... (laughs) Stain <laughs> notes. I, I even printed him new yeah, ones, and he's choosing not to use them. <laughs> uh, I'm choosing to do this to remind me that we all still make mistakes, <laughs> sometimes dumb mistakes. Uh, but uh, this is great. So let's start by determining how much you need total, and then we're going to make it actionable based upon your child's age. Now, I want you to know I used a tool, a free tool, located, guess where? Conveniently, yeah, on Yeah, on the wildly popular website, IWasBrokeNow.com. And I was using certain calculators. Uh, But listen, the total cost of a four-year education, if you go economically, you go to a public school or you get some scholarships at that private school, it's going to cost you $100,000 plus or minus. And so I thought we would just choose that as a number today, $100,000. Now, it should be noted that as the recording of this podcast, my daughter is entering into her second year of college. So I feel this pain <laughs> at a very real and right now relevant level. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Now, at a 3% increase per year, Megan, you have a brand new son named... Logan. Logan. He's awesome. <laughs> has he got hair? Oh, yeah. Like, is it? Is it... But when I've seen it, it's kind of... It's like... It kind of confuses me. Is it blonde... It is can, it red? Is it strawberry blonde? It confuses us, too. Okay. It honestly depends on the day, the light. Sometimes it looks really blonde. Sometimes what, it looks strawberry blonde. Sometimes color, it looks brown. What color of eyes does he have right now? Blue. Yes. They're so cute. Yeah, we're hoping it sticks. So at 3% tuition and cost increase per year, this means you, Megan, would need $171,485 in 18 years to buy what 100000 can buy today. I already feel behind. Woo! Get <laughs> fired up. 
So if you are listening, oh, like man. Megan, have a newborn, this means you should invest the following amounts per month to achieve your goal to help your child graduate from college without any debt. And let me tell you, you can get there with less than you think. Now, these might seem like big numbers, but yeah. it's very little relative to the amount that I just mentioned. So, Megan, if you would plan on an, a 12% rate of return, which is aggressive. Yeah. However, it's about what the S&P 500 has averaged since 1941. That would be $226 a month. Okay? Okay. How do you feel about that? Um, I... Feel like it's a significant amount of money. Car payment. Yeah. Uh, uh, that we a don't have. Car payment. Yeah. Yep. Uh, if it's 10%, then you would need not 226. You would need to invest more, $285 a month. Yeah. And if you think 8%, which is kind of a number that, that more financial planning experts would point you to, it'd be $357 a month. And when you look at that, that's kind of like a car payment. Yeah. But it helps ensure that your child gets this great start off in life. Yeah. Now, let me say something that may sound like splitting hairs, but it's really important. People say saving for college. It was in the question, saving for college. Yeah. But it's really investing for college. And here's why I want to split this hair is, is saving and investing are two totally different things. And you can listen to that in some previous episodes. But saving is for safekeeping. It is not for growth. Mm -hmm. Investing is for growth. And so saving, as my notes stick to my arms <laughs> due to the coffee, savings won't afford you the ability to grow your investments or even keep up with inflation. Yeah. So let alone the rapid inflation of college costs. So I've prepared, get this, this is dun, 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 big <laughs> news. I have prepared a beta test calculator oh. that we're going to post in the show notes that listeners can use to calculate, uh, calculate the amount they need to be investing and it, it asks you to enter the age of your child, and it assumes they're going to college around age 18, and it will ask you how much you have put into their college investment account right now, and it will tell you how much you need to invest per month to get there at different interest rates of growth. Hmm. And, and it's a good test. It's a good thing. And I, I would love to hear your feedback, everybody. We, uh, so uh, even Megan has not seen this tool yet, but it is not. made. It is for real. It's legit. And... And I want you to calculate the number because, Megan, if you cannot do $226 a month right now, mm -hmm. the question I always turn around, and I want you, if you're driving the car and you're kind of thinking, saying $226, $357, who has that type of money? Yeah. The, the, the statement I would say is, okay, maybe you can't do $226. Can you do $26? Do something. Right? Yeah. And, and 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 if I ask you that question right now, Megan, could you do $26 a month? Yeah. 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 She can do that. Right? That, she said that fast. And you driving the car, you can ask yourself that question. And there's no, there's a number. There is a number greater than zero in which it's no brainer. You're like, I can do that. Yeah. I would urge you today, set up the account right now with that number. Because the question that that you should not be asking is how can I do this whole huge amount that I just calculated? The question is what can I do guaranteed right now and mm -hmm. set that up and systematize that as part of your life? Because no one ever sits in my office and says, man, I really regret saving this $20,000 for college. Is it a hundred grand? No, but it's 20 grand yeah. and $26 can get you way farther than you think. Definitely way farther than that pizza will that you could buy with it. <laughs> right? So I encourage you, to do that, invest it. And, and so uh, I would encourage you to think about that. Now, the question is, where should you invest? Where should you invest this money? And I would tell you unequivocally, I like 529 plans. Uh, some people call them 529, 529 plans, part of the section of tax code 529. But listen, if your state has a plan, choose your home's pl home plan. That money in a 529 I'm going to tell you some really important facts. So podcast listener, listen to this. You may want to bookmark this, write it down when you're not driving, if you're driving, whatever. This is very important. Money in a 529 plan can be utilized at any accredited college in the United States or its territories. So you can even go to an accredited college in Puerto Rico because it's a U.S. territory and use money from the Iowa plan, the South Carolina plan. And if your child ends up with too much money in the plan, and I pray that happens for everybody. 
And that can happen. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that in a minute. Mm-hmm. You can pull out an amount equivalent to any scholarships they've received without a penalty. Or you can change the beneficiary to another child or even yourself. Or what? think about this. This is visionary. Roll it over and keep it for your future grandchildren. Hmm. Think about if you got another 25 years of growth on that money. Wow. Big number. Yeah. So in states that have state income taxes, the state will have a 529 plan. And the reason being is there are specific state tax deductions that you can deduct contributions to your state's plan from your state taxes. And so you need to make sure it applies to you, but it applies to almost everyone. So we live in South Carolina. I contribute to South Carolina's plan, and that money allows... I, when I contribute the money, I get to deduct it from my state income taxes. Hmm. And so as we say in all of our investing teaching, if you can have legal tax advantages, let's go after it. Yeah. And this is an important thing to do. And so if you don't have state income taxes, and many states don't, some people are confused by that, but that is truth. Hmm. Florida does not have state income taxes. Texas does not have state income taxes. Tennessee does not have state income taxes. Wyoming, Montana, There are many states that do not have state income taxes. Can you imagine? Isn't that awesome? Yeah. And so so what I would say is uh, you can't deduct it from your state's plan because there won't be a state's (laughs) plan. Uh, There's no interest in it because there's not a state tax deduction. And so I would, if I woke up tomorrow in your shoes and I'm in a no income tax state, then I would put the money in Virginia's 529 college choice savings plan. Here's why. It's administered by one of my favorite plan administrators, American Funds. Mm -hmm. And if you look at a lot of my investments, I have a lot of money in American Funds, one of the premier mutual fund providers, and it's the largest one in the nation. And so it's a fantastically administered program. And again, that money can be utilized in any of the U.S. 50 states or its territories as long as it's an accredited college. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So uh, I want to ask some questions. Uh, of you, Megan, Mm -hmm. and then listeners, I want you to kind of think of these questions and see how they apply to you. So uh, do you have or do you plan to have more than one child? More than one. Okay. So ask yourself this question if you're driving. So if if you end up having children that are within five years of each other, then you need to have separate five to nine plans for each of them. Here's why. You can only have one beneficiary receiving funds from each account at a time. Hmm. Now, you can change that beneficiary, but uh, some states limit how often you can change that beneficiary. And so uh, I have a daughter who was born, you know, she's 19 years old at the time of the recording of this podcast, and we went 10 long years waiting for baby number two. Mm -hmm. He showed up, and then... About four years later, baby number three showed up, our baby girl. And so for my family, I have a 529 plan for my 19-year-old daughter, and I plan on rolling over remaining funds in that. Yes, podcast listener, you heard that right. We will have money remaining. I'm going to explain that in a few minutes. But that money, uh, I'm going to rename him as a beneficiary. They're, if they're still in college at the same time, 10 there's, years difference in age, she better be called doctor, doctor of something, right? Uh-huh. And so there's no, they're not going to be in school at the same time. However, because my second born and my third born are only four years apart, I have separate account for that, that third born, my little daughter. Mm-hmm. And so uh, she has her own account. She's already in the name beneficiary. The other account I will rename to my son when my daughter finishes her education. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. And so think about that with your 529. And one of the ways that you can save for that is, uh, I'm going to tell you some some creative ways to think about it. Number one is you have grandparents who love their grandbabies. Like, does grandma and grandpa, are they over the moon about Logan? Oh, they are, yes. They don't even know who you are anymore. No, they don't. Yeah. (laughs) Like, when they show up, do they even say hi to you? Barely. Barely. <laughs> who, do, who do they do they pick you up and carry you around, or do they pick up Logan and carry him around? That would be so. Yeah, that would be so weird, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm so glad that we grow up. <laughs> but uh, they'll pick up Logan and carry him around, right? Yep. And and so they love him, and there's this super duper love that happens for grandkids. We all see it. It's really unique and amazing when you. And I, I'm not a grandparent, but I've seen four of my brothers become grandparents, and they're they get weird. Yeah. About those grandbabies, and so here's the thing. 
they tend to bring gifts and presents for the grandbaby. And you can tell them, hey, we have this 529 account. Hey, they only play with the box most of the time. <laughs> so why not spend half the amount and put the other half in their college fund? Yeah. Grandparents love to contribute for the future of their grandbabies. And, and so that's one way that you can fund that. Another way is when you eliminate a bill, redirect that payment money straight into that college savings, uh, college investment account. Super important. Okay. Now I've prepared a blog post with a link to all of the 529 plans administered within the USA by state. And that link will be provided in the show notes. And so we've got a list of those. And if the state does not have one, then we've, uh, we've, we, we've got that listed there as well. Mm -hmm. And so we'll have a link to that. And so a couple of things that I want to share uh, in this, this final part of this is if you're a teacher, um, this is super important to think about that that money, uh, if you have continuing ed requirements, you're a teacher, you're a doctor, anything like that, you can, you, you can name yourself as a beneficiary in the, for, the, for that time period and use the money to pay for the continuing ed. If you have a child that's in private school, K through 12, a new recent change allows you to use up to $10,000 a year uh, out of the 529. Oh, wow. And so that's important to think that's about huge. as well. It's huge for people that have kids in private school. A uh, okay. couple other things that I'll share as we finish this episode is when to use it. So we talked about how much you need, and we're going to give you that calculator. I encourage you to download that calculator. We should send a link to that calculator in the show notes when we announce this episode. Oh yeah, and uh, we've talked about uh, we've talked about where we should invest it, and that's the five two nine plan. Let's talk about when to use it as we finish this episode. Uh, when to use it? I would say as needed, but you need to start by minimizing the amount you need from it. So I would encourage you to apply for any and all scholarships. Let me give you an example. Uh, I was in my senior year. I had applied to one university, Purdue University. I grew up in Indiana. Purdue is a state college in Indiana. And so the Purdue Boilermakers with the world's biggest drum. Uh, and they, I got accepted. I got accepted in like five days to the schools of engineering. And so I didn't apply anywhere else. I said, well, that's where I'm going. And my twin said, how are you going to pay for that? And I said, I don't know. I'll join the army if I have to. And so I applied for student aid and I applied for every scholarship, whether it was for me or not, whether I qualified or not. And I applied for scholarships only for girls. I applied, I applied for all of them. Only for girls. At the <laughs> award ceremony for scholarships, the Psi Iota Xi sorority called me and gave me a scholarship for girls what? because I was the only one who applied. And I got I got a scholarship for girls, and I it cashed and it spent just like money. Oh my gosh! It's incredible. Thank you, Cy Iota Cy Sorority, for sponsoring my college, and I'm very grateful. It helped give me the the impetus to go to college, and so apply for all scholarships. It's amazing. In fact, uh, we had an old farming couple that passed away. They left their farm and all the income from that farm in a trust to generate income for kids in our county to go to college. And I got $1,000 a year from that scholarship, renewable every year. So I got four grand from it. And so in today's money, it's kind of like four grand That's per year. That's a lot of money. Yeah, cover books. Um, <laughs> go to a community college for the first two years. Listen, community college is cheap, far cheaper. And nearly all the credits transfer to four-year schools these days. Mm -hmm. And did you do any of that? No. No? I, well, so I went to NC State in Raleigh, North Carolina. Back. Yep. And they have what they call a first year college. And so it was basically like when you don't know what you want to do, you go in, you have to apply and get in um, to this first year college. And then you can kind of figure it out. You take like a special class where they like walk you through different courses and that kind of stuff that you can major in. So it, it wasn't like I was going to community college, but it was basically like I took the first year to kind of figure out what I wanted mm -hmm. to do. So, yeah. yeah. And so community college is so cheap, and there's one very near your house. I mean, I can say that with confidence to anyone living in the U.S. 50 states. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and they've made it to where they have to transfer and accept the credits at the bigger schools because they know it makes, you know, college education available to so many more people. And, uh, it, it, and it, usually you can pay cash for that. And imagine if you could get the first year or two years of college and you have no, no bills from that, no debt incurred. Yeah. 
well, then you can transfer to public school and you you have greatly reduced your likelihood of having a lot of debt when you graduate. Yeah. They're okay? all like general courses you're taking. Those yeah, they are general years. courses. Anyways. And even if you haven't started investing for your kid's college yet and they're getting ready to go to college, it can still be advantageous to put the money into the account and then immediately pay it out to school solely to get the tax advantage of contributing to your state's plan. Mm-hmm. So think about that as you do that. Uh, one other thing, my daughter took AP classes in high school. And as a result, she actually was able to opt out of many classes. And she actually had a program here in the state of South Carolina. I find that's available in lots of states that during her senior year, she actually took two or three classes at the actual community college. When she entered college, she was one class short of being a sophomore. She caught that up in her freshman year. And even though she's going back for her second year of school, she's actually junior status. That's crazy. And as a result, we have, we have more than enough in her 529 plan. And that's what I want for every single person that's listening to the podcast. If you have little guys, listen, start now. Don't regret it. Don't blink and they're 18 and say, oh my goodness, I should have started. Make the sacrifice now because there's nothing greater than being able to look your child in the eye, eye in their junior year and say, let's go look at some schools and know with confidence mm-hmm. that they can go and graduate without being saddled with this boat anchor of debt. And so I encourage you to check out those stats that we had at collegetuitioncompare.com. They'll be in the show notes and use the tool. Uh, It'll be great. And so we have a quote for today and then we'll preview the next episode. We do. Our quote for today is don't go to college for the degree you want. Go to obtain the job you want. That's it. Don't fall in love with the name of the degree or the name of the school. Go to get the job you want. This is a training ground to go add value to the world at large. Awesome. All right, so for our next episode, we're inching towards fall, which is crazy. We're- I'm actually sad about that now because we have a pool. Yeah, yeah. I spent I spent till like 9.30 last night in the pool. You still need to have all the, the team over. Yeah, I know. Like that needs to happen. We need a pool party. Our office Friday or something. It's going to be great. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, luckily in South Carolina, it stays hot till like October, <laughs> which is crazy. Um, So, but next week we're going to be talking about upcoming fall and some time-specific decisions you can make to position yourself for the best year ever next year, which is crazy. Yeah. We're already thinking about We're thinking about 2020. 2020. It's coming into vision. Clear vision 2020. (laughs) You've been waiting for that. (laughs) All right. So if you like today's episode, please help us get this podcast to others who could benefit. You could do this by quickly rating our podcast and leaving us a review. These ratings and reviews will help us make our podcast better for other listeners. And don't forget, on the last Monday of the month, we're answering your top money questions. So make sure you get those sent in. You can email them to info at IWBNAN.com, and you might be featured on the podcast. And if you've implemented one of our tips, make sure you share your success with us. You can email us, share it on Facebook, drag message us on Twitter, Instagram, whatever your preferred method is. It's awesome. Yeah. And I, I'll close with this statement. Uh, Just as I started out this episode, I spilled coffee all over my notes, and sometimes you can let that define how your day is. Uh, I'm choosing not to let coffee spilling on my notes to define my day. (laughs) I encourage you, go look at the 529. Do one thing today. Open the 529 account. You can do it in less than 10 minutes online. Open the account. Set up an automatic contribution of that amount that you say, I can do that. You will never, ever regret that decision. Go have a great week. We'll see you next week on Monday for the next episode of the Monday Money Tip. Get fired up. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Monday Money Tip podcast presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe. And for more great content and to stay up to date, visit IWBNIN.com. We'll catch you next time.